Hello everyone, so I am Jason Sims, and today we're going to be doing another antimalarial drug. Today, we are going to be covering quinine. Alright, so there's a lot to discuss about quinine, so let's get right into this. Alright, so let's start with some general information. So like I said before, this drug, quinine, is for malaria. It's to fight it. So what is going to be causing malaria? It is going to be a specific parasite called plasmodium. Now there are many different strains of plasmodium. The specific strain of plasmodium that we're going to be discussing is plasmodium falciparum, which is a pretty nasty one, one of the worst strains of malaria. Another important thing to know about quinine is this drug is never given alone. We're going to be wanting to give this with another antimalarial drug. Specifically, it's usually given with doxycycline or clindamycin, depending on the age group. So clindamycin is going to be preferred for children, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, so one thing I really want to emphasize throughout this whole entire video, this is going to be an alternate agent. So what does that mean? That means this isn't going to be your first drug that you're going to be wanting to prescribe if someone has malaria. You're going to be wanting to use a drug called artemisinin, which is a drug class. I made a whole entire video talking about that, so if you want to know about those drugs, go watch my video on that. But getting back to this, so we're going to want to first prescribe artemisinin. If that drug is not available, now we're going to be talking about quinine. Another important thing to know is this drug is not going to be for prophylaxis. So a prophylaxis means preventative. This is only going to be for treatment. So you already have malaria, you're going to give quinine to treat it, not to prevent for the future. All right, so some considerations for quinine. Now, we are going to be using quinine for uncomplicated malaria, and we're going to be using it for severe malaria. But primarily, we're going to be wanting to use this for uncomplicated. Simply put, what is uncomplicated malaria, and how does it compare to severe malaria? So uncomplicated malaria is not going to be fatal. It's not going to have multi-organ systems being affected. You're going to have things like fever, nausea, vomiting, muscle aches, GI symptoms. That's, you know, not going to kill you. Now, severe malaria, you're going to be having confusion, you could go into a coma, you could have respiratory difficulties, anemia related from the plasmodium uh, infecting your red blood cells, many different things that can lead to being fatal. Now, not the most important thing, but it is interesting to point out that quinine actually has a bitter taste to it. So what up to date a database on drugs recommends is to take the drug quickly so you actually don't taste the bitterness of it. Now like with any drug there's going to be adverse and there's going to be side effects. Now the main one that we're going to want to know, like many other antimalarial drugs, this drug quinine can cause QT interval prolongation. Now not to get too complicated into this, what is QT interval prolongation? Just it's an abnormality on an EKG, so monitoring the electrical activity of the heart. Now, this can be fatal if you have it too long of an interval, and that's pretty much simplest that I'm going to talk about that. Another very interesting effect this drug can cause is something called hypoglycemia, which basically means low blood sugar, and this is very important in pregnant patients because pregnant patients are more susceptible to having sugar level abnormalities. So if this drug is going to be given, it's going to be lowering your blood sugar because it's increasing insulin and this can be more of a risk for pregnant patients. Now the reason why your sugar is going to be lower from this drug is because quinine increases insulin secretion because insulin is the hormone that causes the body to absorb sugar from the bloodstream. Thrombocytopenia, and that is going to be like what it says on the screen here, low platelets. So that means that you're going to be more at risk for bleeding because platelets are involved with clotting. Now we have a new term here. Quinine can cause something called syncoism, and we could have either mild or we could have severe syncoism. Now mild, you could have headache, you could have lower blood pressure from the vasodilation. Uh, we could also have sensory disturbances involving color and vision and hearing. Now we could also have tinnitus, which is basically like a ringing in the ear. So all these things are kind of annoying, but nothing really too extreme. And once you stop the drug, everything's going to be reversible with this too. Now, severe syncoism, it is a lot worse. It can cause deafness, it can cause blindness, it can cause neurological abnormalities. And the worst thing about this it can cause, it can cause 
cardio abnormality. So cardio means heart. So it can cause an abnormal cardiac rhythm, which can, you know, be fatal. All right, now the last adverse slash side effect that we're gonna be talking about, it's something unique called black water fever. Now, like I said, the parasite that is involved with malaria is called plasmodium. So when plasmodium infects a person, the plasmodium will travel eventually to getting to red blood cells. So once the plasmodium reached the red blood cells, it's going to kill the red blood cell. And this is gonna to lead to something called hemolysis. Hemo, which is kind of like blood, red blood cells. Lysis means killing, breaking apart. So this makes sense. Because the plasmodium is killing so many red blood cells, we're having a massive hemolysis within the body. Now the kidneys, they normally function to filter out, you know, this, this breaking down of red blood cells, but because of so much, the kidneys are overwhelmed and we end up seeing the red blood cells in the urine. So we're gonna have some dark colored urine, blackish, brownish colored. So that's why they call this black water fever because you're having dark colored urine, which is a result from this massive hemolysis. All right, so let's talk about the dosing. So quinine can be used for uncomplicated malaria and it can be used for severe malaria. So primarily, we're not gonna really want to be giving quinine because there's better drugs with less effects. But if we're going to have to give it, we're gonna wanna be giving it for uncomplicated malaria versus severe malaria. So for uncomplicated malaria, we're going to start with giving 650 milligrams, and that's gonna be as a pill PO, which means per oral. And we're gonna give this three times a day for about three to seven days. And why I say three to seven days is because depending on the region that you are gonna be looking at recommendations for, it's different for each country. Now, this is very important. We never give quinine alone. We always pair it with another antimalarial drug. So most likely we're gonna be giving it with doxycycline. But if you are a child, then we're gonna to wanna to be giving this with clindamycin. So let me tell you the reason why now. So doxycycline, one of its side effects is that it deposits in bone. And if you are a child, bones are still growing, it, you don't want it to be depositing in your bones. It can cause yellowing of the teeth and other abnormalities with your bones. Now for severe malaria, this is the fatal type. So we are gonna be doing the same kind of dosing. So the recommendation is we want to start with IV artemisinin. Now, like I said before, we're not talking about this drug in this video because I already made another video on that. But let's say IV artemisinin is not available. Then an option that we can do is the same as uncomplicated malaria, which would be a pill PO of the quinine. Now the thing is, this isn't gonna be the best thing to use. We're gonna still wanna be using artemisinin, but this is what the CDC currently recommends. They say you can use quinine until you can get artemisinin, IV. Some other things that are important to note, it is safe during pregnancy too, but do keep in mind the whole hypoglycemia thing that I talked about in the side effects. All right, so let's talk about the MOA, the mechanism of action for this drug. All right, so like I said before, the plasmodium, the parasite of malaria, the way how it functions is it gets into the body, then it will eventually, after different steps, make its way to red blood cells. Once the plasmodium, the parasite, is in the red blood cells, it's gonna take hemoglobin, which is inside red blood cells, and break it down for its amino acids, which is required for the plasmodium to continue replicating and you know continuing to survive. The thing is though, when the hemoglobin is broken down by the parasite, we have something called heme. And to the parasite, heme is toxic. So normally, what would the thing do to get rid of this toxic something? It would continue to break the heme down. It would break the heme down from heme to hemozoin. So that's where this drug comes in. It's going to affect this breakdown from heme to hemozoin, and this means that the heme, which is toxic, is gonna be accumulating in the red blood cells, continuing to increase which would kill the plasmodium. So again, heme is toxic, hemozoin is non-toxic, so we're gonna be stopping the step from toxicity to non-toxicity by giving quinine. Now, I don't have it on here, but it's something important that I want to discuss just real quickly. If you are going to be infected, not with plasmodium falciparum, which this is what this drug is gonna be used for, but you're infected with something like plasmodium ovale or plasmodium vivax, you can give quinine, but you must also give it with primaquin because primaquin is what is specifically needed to get rid of the malaria of those species. 
And if you wanna know really more the specifics, I made a video talking about those strains, talking about Primaquin, so go watch that. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this. There was a lot to, to learn here. I know it's complicated, but just rewatch it, and I tried my best. All right, I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video.